Welcome back to another live edition of Taking Stock. We're bringing you all the latest business news and telling you how it will affect you and your money. Now, I want to remind you to hit up the like button and let me know where you're joining us from, what part of Jamaica and what part of the world. Let me know in the comments, in the chat. I see some people already lighting up the chat. I love to see it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Well, here's a look at what's coming up in tonight's show, followed by what's hot in business. And come on, let's get this money. JMMB Group is reporting a whopping $15 billion in profit for the third quarter ending December 2023. That's 278% more than the corresponding period last year. Wow. What led to this stellar performance? And the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. Lasca Manufacturing and Lasca Distribution has migrated to the main market, and a tropical battery is planning an additional public offering in June. We'll discuss. But first, here's what's hot, brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. JMMB Group last week announced the launch of its long-awaited Moneyline app, the app will allow customers to conduct all their banking and investment transactions in one spot. Customers will also be able to pay bills, send local and international wire transfers, and buy and sell stocks. The app is available for download in the Google Play Store and the App Store. Robert Almeida has officially been named CEO of NCB Financial Group. Almeida has been acting as interim CEO since last July following the departure of Patrick Hilton. A veteran in the banking and finance industry, Almeida has been at NCB for over 16 years in a director role. NCB FG Chairman Michael Leachin made the announcement of the company's AGM last week. Bob Marley One Love set a new midweek record earning 14 million US dollars in North America on the first day only. The film hit theaters on February 14, which was celebrated as Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day. The biopic about Jamaican icon and reggae legend Bob Marley brought in an estimated 80 million USD globally as of Sunday. The film, which focuses on Bob Marley's life from 1976 to 1978, was made for 70 million US dollars and is distributed by Paramount Pictures. Meanwhile, the film also broke records for Palace Amusement. Marketing manager at Palace, Melanie Graham, said that the two of the company's four theatres were sold out on Wednesday, marking the 100-year-old company's largest opening day. Graham said over 7,500 moviegoers watched the film on opening day, which is twice the amount that attended opening day for the 2018 blackbuster Black Panther. The United Kingdom has slipped into a technical recession following a second quarter of economic decline. According to the Office for National Statistics, GDP fell 0.3% in the final three months of 2023, after 0.1% in the July to September quarter. A recession is usually defined as two consecutive quarters of economic decline. However, some economists say the label recession is overly dramatic. They argue that despite the fall-off in economic growth, employment rates continue to rise, and real wages, which is the amount of money a person makes, adjusted for inflation, have rebounded. What's Hot was brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. Listen up, if you're self-employed, you're legally required to file your taxes by March 15, so you have about a month to get it done. And if you've never filed your own taxes before, it can be very intimidating. You may even end up putting it off and hoping TAJ doesn't catch you. Don't do that. I got you. So I recently invited Courtney Johnson, taxpayer education specialist from Tax Administration Jamaica, to show us how to file online. Now, the good news is there are a lot of tax credits that you can benefit from to actually bring your taxes down. For the wear and tear that the vehicle had for the year, we give you a little allowance for it. So the vehicle value, $2 million. 12.5% of that is... 240, 250. 100, 250, something like that. And then you can also claim in the first year another 12.5% for annual allowance. So in this case, it's 25% to claim a quarter of the value of the vehicle, which is 500,000. Wow. 
Because what it does is 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 further reduce the amount of what we call statutory income that is subject to income tax. Be like Donald. Donald said, I'm smart. Why is he smart? He does a whole lot of smart stuff that reduces the statutory income for tax purposes. So he pays virtually no tax. Right, Donald? Right. If you have employees, you get a tax credit. If you drive your personal vehicle, you get a tax credit. If you pay all of your statutory deductions on time, you get a tax credit. TAJ come in like Oprah, you get a tax credit, you get a tax credit, everybody gets a tax credit. And Courtney gave us a whole list of tax credits and deductions that can help you out. But it is a lot of things to fill out, so don't leave it till the last minute. Check out this Money Mission webinar. It's about two hours long. You can follow along and create your TAJ online account and fill out your tax returns. You can watch it as many times as you need to get it right. It's under the Entrepreneurs tab in Money Mission, accessible with a basic or premium account. The link is in the description. Let's get this money. me dancing let me see who we have online so far richardo's greetings all the way from destin florida michael says portmore in the building sean is here and ready nano sense is joining us from far far away as usual demar is in st catherine colette is in kingston and ready to get the money eon is in guyana anita's in kingston chris is in panama city we got Philly in the house. We got Nassau in the building, all the way in the Bahamas. We have New Jersey. We have China. We have Mana Park. Oh, my goodness. See, taking stock is absolutely global. I love to see it. Let me know where you are joining us from this wet evening in Kingston. Well, JMMB is reporting $15 billion in profit for the third quarter ending December 2023. And if it sounds like a lot, that's because it is, even relatively speaking, because it is 278% more than the corresponding period last year. And I want to know what led to this. So here we have Keith Duncan from JMMB to give us the update. Hi, Keith. Good. Um, you good are evening. muted. Good. All right. Good. There you are. Thank you, Kalila, and, and good evening to all your um, listeners, viewers um, uh, across the globe. Thank you for having me and happy to share. Absolutely. And Keith, by the way, is group CEO of JMMB. So let's start with this, uh, this stellar news and 278% increase in net profits. Is it net profits? I think it's net profits. Yes. Yeah. What accounts for that? Well, Kalila, really, um, you know, this, our results are consistent with our strategy over the years of diversification. And we have been, um, you know, growing um, business lines, banking, investments, insurance, brokerage, um, uh, remittance, payments um, uh, over the years. And, um, and we have diversified across countries, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, Trinidad, and now Barbados. And we have also um, diversified with um, our strategic acquisition of the Sagicor Financial, 23% of the SFC group which makes us the largest shareholder in the Sagicore Financial Group, that is a parent company, right? And uh, that diversification has worked for us because if we're operating in a very difficult environment in Jamaica based on the tight monetary policy and also in the DOMREP, what we have been able to see is the Sagicore Financial Group, a financial um, corporation able to deliver stellar results for us. And um, a significant amount of those gains of approximately 14 billion was delivered by uh, uh, by uh, the gains on acquisition of a insurance company in um, Canada by the SFC Group, Ivari, which is a life insurance company in Canada, a fairly large um, life insurance company in Canada. And they got it at a, at a bargain price and were able to record gains of over 400 million US dollars and 23% um, and of that accrued to JMB being a 23% of um, shareholder in Sagicor. 
So based on what you're saying, let yeah. me bring in this comment here. Where is it? Nano sense. And maybe the name says it all. Says JMMB jumping profit is a one-time thing. It sounds like it's not. Well, you know, SFC um, is a is there. We we do do a share of profits, and SFC Group continues to deliver. Where where we also have good results coming out of is the Domrep and um, the Dominican Republic in Tr and Trinidad, because Trinidad hasn't been as impacted by the um, interest rate environment because the central bank has held rates steady at three and a half percent. In Jamaica, we know the um, our central bank has moved interest rates from. 50 basis points to to um to seven percent which is um has impacted uh the financial services business um in jamaica most of the players in a very negative way especially investment the investment business line and if you look at the results of um other investment houses across jamaica you would see the negative impact that um that it has had on um on the this business line it has impacted negatively our business line in um in Trinidad also, in the investment business line, but banking has stood up for us in Jamaica, Trinidad, and the DR, and um, but the investment business line has taken a hit. So therefore, our operating profit would have taken a hit, and our share of profit from associate companies would have been done very well for us because insurance companies actually do very well in this type of environment, in a, um, a higher interest rate environment, in a rising interest rate environment. So this is all diversification at play. Yes, and you do have one-offs that um, that go to the bottom line, but that is exactly um, you know the, the, you the, it's it's a very deliberate strategy around ac acquisitions and opportunities and that the JMB Group has employed and Sagicor Financial Corporation is doing an excellent job and have continued to um, to build their presence in North America through Sagicor USA. Sajikor and now Ivari in Canada and um and continue to build their presence um not only in the Caribbean but in the North American market. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been telling people that financial sector took a hit last year and that has impacted not only my business but media businesses in general and there's a ripple effect on, mm -hmm. on what happened there. But you did mention the indirect acquisition of that Canadian insurance firm. So there was a one-off game. But speak yes. to us about that acquisition. Well, it's um, you know, it's as I said, it's uh, Ivari is a um, a uh, insurance company, um, from mid-income, middle, mid-level insurance company in um, Canada, and um, it has been, it it was um, one hundred percent acquired in um. Uh, in about August, September of 2023, and um, I think it was concluded in September or early or October. No, it was in October that it, that it was concluded, and therefore, um, Ivari is now um, a 100% um, holding of the SFC Group, and it's a very profitable um, insurance company in Canada, and therefore, it's going to be accretive to the bottom line of the SFC, and then JMB, of course, JMB being at 23 percent and the largest shareholder in sfc you know we have a lot of investors who watch this show and even mm -hmm. though it is great that you're reporting strong profits for some reason and i have a lot of comments in the yeah. chat right now, i'm going to take a couple of them yeah man. people are concerned about the stock price so we have nanis saying trying to figure out jmmb because if you gained so much profit for 2023 why did the stock fall so much well, I mean, I believe um, the, whole, the, the whole entire market has taken a hit um, in terms, and especially financial services. When you're in an environment of high interest rates and the Fed is holding rates at over 5%, moving by from 025 to 0.5%, the Fed to 5%, there is tight liquidity. Money is the, um, what he said, Kalida, what you already said, right? But money is the, is the product of financial services. And if central banks are tightening liquidity, right, you are especially impacted by that because your cost of funds move. So when you have the central bank push up interest rates in Jamaica to 7%, right? And you we all know where government of Jamaica global bonds were trading 5, 6%, and your cost of funds um, in Jamaican dollars move north of 7%. And you're on the on the US 
uh, on the U.S. currency side, your cost of funds move from 1% to north of 5%. Your net interest income, your net interest margins are significantly impacted. That is driven by the macroeconomic environment, the monetary policy of the Fed, Federal Reserve, and the Central Bank in Jamaica, the Central Bank in, Bank in the Dominican Republic, that's the environment that we're in. Now, what do you do? You have to ensure that you, um, you have a diversification. So therefore, the Dominican Republic would have delivered um, reasonable results. Trinidad would have delivered reasonable results because the Central Bank has not moved on interest rates in Trinidad. And therefore, diversification through country. The investment business line would have taken a hit, but the banking business line would have would have would have performed, and creditably because they're also impacted. But uh, but the the asset the the yield on loans there can be adjustments over time. When you are investing in fixed income securities, the yield on your assets don't move, so your cost of fund moves and increase significantly in line with where the central banks set that kind of floor rate and your net interest income is significantly impacted. So therefore, your, your profits from that line of business are significantly impacted. Now, what, what works for JMB is a diversification that we have. And yes, we did have a one-off, right? And of course, we will continue with our, our own our strategy of uh, diversification and also looking at how we go forward with in terms of continuing to uh, modify our strategy because what has happened now is that we know having the banking business line, the investment business line, now we need to reallocate capital to where we are getting the better return mm -hmm. in within our portfolio of companies. And that's the process we're going through now to grow in a more capital efficient way, to move somewhat away from the investment business line, which has been impacted significantly and move more into banking and move more into payments, move more into um, the, um, the uh, insurance brokerage and the, and the, and, and supporting the support of the uh, Sagicor Finance Corporation. We all sit on the board and we all provide direction there and to ensure that that growth opportunity continues. Mm, makes sense. So Sean wants to know, speaking of profits, Where's the comment? What will the profits be used for? So are you looking at increased payout for shareholders through dividends, or are you looking at more acquisitions and you know reinvesting profits? Right. Well, I mean, we just um we just we just kind of rolled out in Barbados. Um and that that's gonna be a fairly small operation to begin with, uh, in terms of that new market. But we always we always do have um you know, acquisition opportunities in, in our pipeline. And there, there, are several, there, are, there are quite a, there are a number of them that are at almost at the stage of being, being um, ready for, to go through the approval process, the regulator approval. Uh, however, that is, you know, we have to take into account market conditions. We have to take into account what is, what is our outlook. But the diversification continues. We have always said that we want to use the um, Dominican Republic as a launching pad into Central America. So we continue to look at Central American opportunities that we have in our grasp. And we continue to, um, to, to build out our payments business lines, like our money transfer, build out our digital um, solutions, like the Moneyline app, which was just, um, which we finally were able mm -hmm. to launch. Congratulations and, on that, because that's long overdue indeed. Oh, my. But you know, listen, Kalila, we had to we, we had to really wow you. Okay, so we had to really get it right, and um, we think we have a good good um, app which is um, can stand with the best, right? And this will be able to give you an integrated view of your banking and your investment business. So therefore, you can go online on the, go on money line, and then you can do your banking business, you can do investment business, you can buy stocks, and all of that is done online. So you don't have to. You can do all this from your the comfort of your from wherever you are remotely, right? And um, as you know, JMB is like the number one in terms of uh, in terms of our, our online platform 
in terms of stocks, and therefore we are the leader in terms of transaction volumes on the JSE, and we are like number two, number three in Trinidad in terms of our presence on the equity market. Good stuff. So we've been talking about volatility in the market for some time now. Since COVID, everything just get mashed up. I spoke right. about last year. But based mm -hmm. on your latest results, would you say that things are starting to get back to normal in the financial sector? What I would say, Kalila, is that we are at the top of the interest rate cycle right now, right? So um, the, the, the central bank has held interest rates in Jamaica at 7%. The Fed is now working through when is it? They sent a signal in December that they're going to reduce interest rate, right? Now, this is all going to be driven by data. S same thing for Central Bank in Jamaica, right? Now, when things really start to shift is when we you now start to see the loosening of monetary policy, right? And interest rates start to come off, right? Right now, um, interest rates are still at the peak and they now need to move south. And they... And that is going to be driven by inflation. So we're watching the CPI, da CPI, I, CPI data out of the US, looking at inflation readings in Jamaica, because the central bank in Jamaica has said that they expect inflation to be outside of the 4 to 6% range for this year. That means we can expect maybe interest rates will remain at these levels, higher for longer, or if the Fed moves in the in the second half of the year and makes two or three interest rate cuts, then the Jamaican Central Bank, the BOJ, could be um, maybe in a position to look to reduce rates, right? And then in the Dominican Republic, they moved significant. They moved. They had moved their interest rates up to about over eight percent. They reduced interest rates to seven percent, but they have held no waiting on the Fed. So therefore. If we're really going to see a sustained um, return um, to and the, the markets beginning to move once again in any significant and sustainable upward mo movement, it has to be driven by signals coming from the central bank and interest rate cuts. That is where we're going to have to see that happen. If not, then ev everything is in a wait and see mode and the the, ba the cost of funds and your baseline cost of funds is driven by the floor that the central bank set and also that they are tightening liquidity. One has to remember that they, if we look at the central bank auctions for 30-day CDs, which is what they use to mop up liquidity, a 30-day CD, you know, institutions can buy that at between nine and ten and a half. Right. Before you continue, for those who are new, just explain what a 30-day CD is. Okay, so the Bank of Jamaica, um, this is how they control liquidity through their open market operations, right? And the Bank of Jamaica wants to pull liquidity out of the system. So in order to reduce the, um, the amount of Jamaican dollars that are in the market, that can chase U.S. dollars or that can drive demand, domestic demand in the economy, right? Because they're trying to control for inflation. So they don't want the dollar to move. So, um, and because they are trying to control imported inflation and the dollar has been able to maintain some level of stability over the last year to two years, they want to ensure that exchange rate stability because nobody wants to see the exchange rate move and then people start to reprice their goods, businesses start to reprice their goods at higher and higher levels of the exchange rate. So, you know, everybody will say, oh, I'm going to reprice my goods at 165. No, you want exchange rate stability. So the Bank of Jamaica is going to pull Jamaica out by, by saying to the market, I'm going to auction CDs. So come and buy my BOJ CD. CD then, meaning certificate of deposit. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Certificates of deposits. That's correct. And that is what they use. And then they auction these CDs and they, um, they, the, 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 the institutional players, they go and they bid and they have been bidding around 10%. So that is a 10%. Yes, ma'am. What? Do individual yes. investors get those kind of opportunities? Well, they're they're individual investors um, do get um, the, these kind of rates um, because um, you know uh, in in and especially the institution and the corporate, you know they do get these rates. But you know individual investors that there is there are tears right in how um, financial institutions deal with um, 
uh, the um, in set rates in their set their rates sheets, right? So therefore, you might find a institutional investor able to get much higher rates than say uh, a retail because I mean the, the, because just the, the cost of banking and um, uh, institutions versus banking a retail plan can probably get exposed to it if you invest in certain funds, huh? Yes. So therefore, there, there are some funds that would be loading up in terms of as much as possible. But then that's driven by liquidity also. Because the, if there's no liquidity in the system, then um, then everyone has to now be, be um, competing for that liquidity in the market and keeping the cost of funds up. Mm. In the meanwhile... The, the financial institutions are trying to manage their cost of funds because remember, you know, their, the, the yield on their assets have a move. Like, for example, GOJ Globals, right? Kalila, they're trading like at, they were 5 6%. Now, if the Fed is at 5% and, um, and um, uh, then institutional would be demanding, if 5% is their overnight rate, would be demanding 6 and 7%. That's a negative spread, right? That's what we're seeing in the market, and that has impacted the investment business lines globally. So you see that they're doing their they're managing their costs um, globally. You see people being sent home because they have to manage their costs because their margins have been eroded, and they have to be able to manage their businesses to deliver value to shareholders. Mm. So, so let me ask you then, not as JMMB Group CEO yeah. right now, probably this is more of an EPOC slash PSOJ hat or just an yeah. observer hat, yeah. uh, economic observer hat. What would you say Jamaica's economy is like right now for business? Is it good for business or bad for business? So I, here's I, what. I, I, know, I know, and I know you're not going to say it's bad for business, no, right? No, no. no, Kalila, here's what. There, yeah, we have to be um, balanced about this, right? Mm -hmm. um, no, the Jamaican economy has some robustness to it, right? And um, and um, we have seen us we, the economy able to maintain growth levels. It's slowing, but and but it's it's falling back into the range of one to two percent. Can it sustain it? What we have been seeing is the growth in the economic activity and the turnover in the economy is still very much there. Is that driven by tourism, driven by the return of mining, driven by um, the manufacturing sector? But we have seen the economy continue to grow. Now, the negative headwinds would be the fact that interest rates are this high and therefore investors could take a wait and see attitude and that could mute growth going forward. So if we don't see interest rates um, coming down, that, is a, that would have a negative impact on businesses saying, listen, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to borrow money at 12, 13, 14% when two years ago they could have borrowed money at 7 and 8%. Right? So they're going to think twice. And they're going to say, I'm going to wait and see because maybe interest rates will come down in six months, in one, in a year's time. That is where you could have this, that, that, but that negative um, drop pull on the economy. However, we have seen some robustness with, since the recovery from COVID, and we are seeing tourism, Airbnb, and all of these areas continue to grow significantly. So there's, there, there is some underlying robustness to the Jamaican economy, but the negative, the, negative, the negative pull on it is from the interest rates and the tight monetary policy that we see. But what about for individuals? Because for us, I feel like the number one issue last year was inflation. So right. while BOJ is doing all of this and, you know, the interest rates and they're trying to control inflation, we are hit with the prices of food going up every single day. Right. And that is exactly why the BOJ is keeping monetary policy tight, because they're saying they have to control inflation because they don't want inflation. It is to become a to build its own momentum. And the next thing you know, inflation is 10 percent. So they are doing everything that they can do by having a tight monetary policy taking the money out of the market so that um, the price of goods and services are not repriced higher. Now, a lot of this may be driven by external or it's driven by the weather conditions in agriculture or, you know, the external being at commodity prices. 
and what is going on over there in the Red Sea in terms of the supply chain um, issues that could emerge. And, you know, and therefore, uh, while inflation seems to be trending down, you know, when you, if you were to do a cumulative kind of look at inflation over the last three years, remember one year it was like 11%, and then the, then it was down to like 7 and then projected to be 7 So, it, you know, you're looking like 30% over the last three years almost. That is the erosion of purchasing power, and that's that's the pain that people are feeling. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. By the way, when when will the um the Ligani office open? Okay, so what we're going to be doing at Ligani is we're going to be doing more of a digital kind of branch in um, Ligani, but we're um but uh it um we're going to have a presence in Ligani. When? Okay. Um, that, that should be towards the end of the year. Let me tell you, I can't, it, I know it's towards the end of the year, towards mid to end of the year sometime. Okay. Every day I pass it and I'm like, looking good. When will it open? When will it open? <laughs> yes, yes. We're looking forward to that too. <laughs> but that was a great discussion on the state of the economy right now. Uh, let me see if I have any other questions online. A few of them have already been answered. Uh... MM wants to know why is interest rate for JMMB <laughs> unsecured loan 32%? Is it that high, Keith? No, where? 32%? But unsecured loan at JMMB. Is, that? That, that, is that where in Trinidad or Jamaica or, or Dominic? I don't know. I'm assuming what it's entity, Jamaica, what, but it could what, be what somewhere else. I don't, think, I don't think it's that high. What entity is that? 32% zone. I thought it was like in the maybe the high teens. Unsecured. Uh, he's not. He hasn't answered yet. Let okay. me see if we have any more. Sean, last question comes from Sean. Is JMMB looking to partner with the JSC to allow investing in the Canadian stock market? Okay. I um, mean, let me tell you. I'm going to have to take. Um, I'm going to have to um, take that one and um, respond to it another time. I'm not sure exactly where we're going with that. Okay. Uh, MM says it is in Jamaica. He's, he says it's 32 percent here in Jamaica. You know, you're going to call Jerome Smalling about that. Uh, okay, it does sound very high. I do, you know, that uh, sounds high. That sounds on the high side. You, um, I, I would love to check that. That sounds very much on the high side. Thirty-two percent is, is um, sounds very much on the high side. But I would have to check that. I'm not sure. Let me tell you, what we we use a, a tool called a risk-adjusted re return on capital, right? So if it's a risky product, a risky loan, it's going to price higher than a. Mm -hmm. Than a than a than a than a, a higher credit quality loan, right? So it depends because what you know if if someone has um you know the credit quality is not as good, then the loan is going to price higher, and that's ah. kind of, right. Yes. So MM, do realize that your credit score and your credit quality has a lot to do with the rates that you are offered. So if it's thirty-two percent, you're probably a high-risk uh, lendy. <laughs> Uh, to put it that way so keith anything else that you'd like to add before we go yeah well i mean no thank you very much but um what we're we know we will continue to drive for growth and profitability manage growth where we're um we call it smart growth where we're looking to ensure that we allocate our capital and shareholders capital in the most efficient way we do have our, have our shareholder value proposition we have to ensure that we continue to um ensure that our entities are are adequately capitalized, that we're driving um, the um, profitable businesses, that the, one of the lessons that we have learned over the last couple of years is that, you know, because JMB started as an investment host, and that used to be provide maybe 50, 60% in recent times of our revenues and our profitability. And when that got hit, it really threw us off. So therefore, they, oh, oh, we are happy that we, had our deliberate diversification strategy, which is now paid off for us. So we're going to continue with our diversification strategy. Thank you very much, Keith Duncan, Thank Group CEO of JMMB. So it's time for us viewers to get into tonight's poll question. You've heard us talking about interest rates. And even though interest rates are high, some realtors are saying that now is the best time to buy a house. 
Now, when I first heard this, I saw it in the paper. Some, some, I don't remember where. Some one of the papers reported it. I'm like, of course, realtors will say now is the best time to buy a house. But then I read the argument. I'm like, okay, maybe. So do you agree? Uh, here are your options. And you can take this poll either on the community tab of here on YouTube or on Twitter. Or you can just leave your comment in the chat. So yes, house prices will only go up. Nope. I'll wait till rates go down. See, it depends on your budget or other. Leave a comment. Let me know. Is now really the best time to buy a house? I mean, the best time was 10 years ago, right? <laughs> but 10 years ago is gone. So it's now, I guess, the next best time to buy a house. Uh, yes, no, it depends on your budget. Other, leave a comment. Take the poll on Twitter or on the community tab of my YouTube channel. You can also leave your comments in the chat. I see some of you saying C, some saying uh, D says best time to buy. It's always the best time realtors will say, I'm sure is <laughs> exactly what I was just saying. Uh, Sean said, whoever said it's a good time to get a mortgage is wicked. Oren says it's always a good time to buy a house provided that you have the money. Raquel says C, it depends on your budget. Anita says no doesn't believe it is the best time at all. So guys, before we go to market recap, we're updating the Jamaica Broker Guide. So I first published this guide in 2021, December 2021. It is way overdue for an update. A lot of changes have taken place. For example, we've had two new brokers. We've had SSL removed from the broker list. And so we need to update the Jamaica Broker Guide. I have a five minute survey. So if you have an investment account, please take this five-minute survey to help us get updated info on the best brokerage firms in Jamaica. Who has the best customer service? Who has the best online platform? Who gives the best advice? The link is in the description, and let me post it in the chat now as well, so that you can just go and click it in the chat. Best brokers in Jamaica. Here we go. Paste. There it is. All right, so take that survey. It's only like five minutes. And of course, remember to hit that like button. Up next, we've got your market recap and the analysts are standing by. Hey, money makers! join the KRM fam with our official merch. Get it now at KhalilaReynolds.com. Let's get this money. The JSC Combined Index was mostly flat last week. 123 stocks traded across the main and junior markets for the week, ending Friday, February 16, 2024. 55 made gains, 60 lost value, and 8 stayed the same. 121 million shares changed hands on the Jamaican dollar market, valued at $471 million. Trans Jamaican Highway was last week's most traded stock. It took up 28% of market volume with 34 million shares trading. The stock lost 13 cents to open the new week at $3.16. Wigton traded the second highest. The stock lost one cent to open Monday at 93 cents. And QWI Investments rounded out last week's most traded with 13 million shares changing hands. The stock lost two cents to open Monday at 59 cents. Now let's see who had the biggest gains for the week. T-Tech was the market's biggest gainer. The stock was up 21% open Monday at $2.49. Salada Foods was up 19% to start the new week at $3.70. And PBS 10.5% was the week's third biggest gainer. It was up 18% to open the new week at $1,284. On the losing side now, Sterling Investments USD was the week's biggest loser. The stock lost 15% open Monday at $0.02 cents US. PBS 9.75% was also down 15% opening the new week at $101.66. And ISP Finance lost 14% to close the week at $26.96. Over on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, the Composite Index gained 13 points last week. Massey Holdings was the most traded stock. The stock lost $0.09 cents to open Monday at $4.25 TT. Scotiabank TNT was the biggest gain of the week. The stock was up 7% to start the week at $71.48 TT. And on the losing side, 
Unilever Caribbean fell 7% to open Monday at $11 TT. Over in the U.S., the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 were mostly flat last week, while the Nasdaq was up by 1%. It was a rough week over the pumps. Gas prices climbed $1.56, while diesel prices shot up by $4.50. In foreign exchange, it took an average $157.52 Jamaican to purchase one US dollar last Friday. That's one cent more than the week before. Meanwhile, it took an average $116.98 Jamaican to purchase one Canadian dollar. One British pound cost on average $197.86 Jamaican, and you could buy one euro for $171.24 Jamaican on average. Finally, on the crypto markets, Bitcoin prices rose 1% over the past five days, trading at $52,298 US on Monday, while Ethereum prices rose 5%, trading at $2,917 US on Monday. This segment of Taking Stock, The Analyst, is brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. Disclaimer, this is not intended as financial advice. Please consult a licensed financial advisor before making investment decisions. Welcome back. Let me see some of your comments in the chat. Shelly Ann says, on a better way, Pam Bloom, a whole $8 million host. <laughs> ah, okay, Shelly. Not bad regarding tonight's, uh, not the poll. This is Best Brokers. Yes, Best Brokers. So Sherwin, Sherwin says, of course, JMMB is up top. Barita is next. Others can fill in the rest. Nani says, I just love JMMB's platform. Excellent customer service also. Then we have Sean reminding everybody to like up the video. Come on, let's get those thumbs up. Let's get the likes in on both YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Shout out to all our Instagram viewers watching us right now. I think we had a comment, a couple of comments from Instagram. So Kristen, uh, sorry, not Kristen, Witter Monique said, I can concur that the app is fantastic. And we had a couple of comments as well about, so, and these were answered earlier. So if we have more comments from IG, we're going to post them for you as well. So time now for the analysts. I'm joined by Clive Charlton, who is equities trader at JMMB. It's a JMMB night tonight, Clive. It was hey, good to good. see you. Oh, good to see you too. Thanks for having me on the program as usual. Hey. The viewers always love when you're on. I was oh, like, yeah, you. Clive always come with the knowledge. So yeah. tonight we have, we're taking a look at Laska Manufacturing and Laska Distribution. They have migrated to the main market. So tell us more. What yes. does this mean? Yes. Well, they have announced that they will migrate soon. It's not the first. I've had uh, other companies that have migrated from the junior market. You know, one of the qualifying uh, criteria for being listed on the junior market is that you have a capital paid a capital of between 50 million and 500 million but of course the significant benefit to these companies is the 10-year tax break 10 zero corporate tax in the next five years uh 50 percent it is expected that they would have grown significantly and grown through of course tax savings but also through the ability to raise capital uh notoriety in terms of you know marketing um these are free when you are listed on the stock exchange and it gives you a brand new open space to to internationally you know because you're now under significant scrutiny and once that 10 year has passed and the tax break that you know these companies receive then they must migrate to the main market uh, what I've noticed, though, is that it is not done at the same time exactly 10 years after, which I think is what many people expect to happen. You know? uh, for example, LASCO, LASD, LASM, and LASF were all listed in October 2010. That's about 14 years ago. So that tax break has ended probably about four years back, you see, and they have now chosen to migrate to the main market. I was laughing because somebody said Clive must be an elite employee. He's still at the office. <laughs> <laughs> the, this is where the best lighting is <laughs> and the best connection. <laughs> Sean said Clive is a real top G. <laughs> yeah, so it <laughs> just distracted me for a minute. Yeah, so all right. So migrating. It hasn't happened yet. So we have last, which which are the two that's, that's moving? Last D have, and last M. Last D and last, and last M. M. So what about yes. Lasco last Financial? Good. You know, I have heard that question before. 
I asked that question too. I'm sure there's a reason for that. I'm not too sure now. I don't want to speculate, uh, but they were all listed at the same time. Um, you know, here's what my take on some of the, the, the lateness in, uh, or the delay in, in cross-listing. What bears on many people's investors' mind is that on that 10th, going into the 11th year, persons believe that uh, the company is now taxable, its profit is taxable, and it may impact the stock price. I think this is just my view, my personal view. There's no, it's anecdotal, right? We don't have any studies to indicate if there's any, you know, sufficient data to justify my position. I'm just saying this. I think that just staying listed on the junior market for an extended period of time, I think there's a strong psychological part aspect to trading. And I think persons not thinking of the migration, they do not even think of the tax break period ending. They do not think of the significant financial impact, potential financial impact it might have on the company. You see? So it may play a psychological role in slowly tiding the companies over to the main market. Sometimes uh, another is that, is that a is that a positive thing or a negative thing? It could be positive. I think it, it could be positive for the technical aspect. That is the trading aspect. We're not talking about the financial part of it. It might be um, a positive. It should be a positive effect. But I know that there's another reason though why some companies may migrate. For example, Key migrated because it was an associate and sub, sub, subsequently a subsidiary of a main market listed company so that had to migrate to the main market that's another reason why but in the alaska case that's not the reason their time has expired and they have chosen to move tied over to the main market and i think in the main market also they can raise unlimited amount of capital yes that is a very good point as well so what shelly ann says doesn't that show how slack jsc is 10 years is the mark, then it should be 10 years. No wonder we had SSL and now he who shall not be named. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't think it's a slip up. I think it's up to the companies. They leave it up to the companies to decide when they will migrate. Uh, does it have an impact? <clears throat> there, are no, there are no separate rules post listing between the junior market and the, the main market. Uh, the fees are quite the same. Uh, the listing requirements and the fees associated are the same. Uh, there's nothing significantly different that might impact the value of the company or the value of the shares, let me say that, what is traded on the stock market. So I think it's just they simply give these companies a little bit of time to decide when they want to tie it over to the main market. So, all right. So of the three last goes, last D, last M, last F, which one is the biggest one? Last D, I believe it's trading at about last M. Well, in terms of trading price, last M at about five dollars, and last D, I'm looking at some statistics. Last D is trading at about four dollars. And oh. the, 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 yeah, the total number of shares outstanding. Let me have a quick look at this. Hmm. I'd have to pull these up right here. I have a document in front of me, so I'm looking at them now. The total number of shares last D has about uh three billion shares outstanding last d that's about four dollars times three and a half billion that's about 13 14 billion dollars in value that's the last d uh last m uh, hmm. okay i have a document with about 120 companies <laughs> and my eyesight is not that good, but I, the last D, okay, Laska Manufacturing, sorry about that, has about 4 billion shares outstanding, valued at roughly $5, that's about $20 billion, right? And last, if we know, is the smaller, um, the smallest of the three, right? So certainly it is last M with 4 billion shares times a price of about uh, $4, $5. And last D times a price of about 3.5 billion shares times a price of about $4. Okay. So, yeah, so oh. we see a last M is a larger company. Garvin is making the point that re last F it's because their share capital is still below the 500 million for the okay. junior market, which is why okay. they haven't yes. or aren't yes. migrating along with the other two. So, they, as you mentioned, they are the smallest okay. of the three. Yes, exactly. And then That's Sean. 
Yeah. Has a question, well, a comment, but he, I guess we want your opinion on it. He says, I don't understand why Last D is trading for over 12 years now, yet their dividend yield is barely over 2.5%. The company is making billions in profit, yet nothing. <laughs> That's a well, <clears throat> that's a well, I could only speculate, but um, usually that's a decision for the board to decide. I'm sure that there's a strong fundamental reason, meaning a financial reason, why they have you know decided not to. But what I can perhaps speculate, not even speculate, there's some fundamental reasons that I think holds for every company <clears throat> in this high interest rate environment, in this tight environment where there's not much liquidity people are not so interested in the market you don't want to hold on to as much cash or capital as you can so many companies have kind of tightened some have increased dividend payout but some companies have are strategically managing that especially at this time okay and that more than likely is a reason all right let's move on to our other topic which is tropical battery apparently yes. we've heard Grapevine says that they're planning an additional public offering in June. Do you yes. have any more information, anything else you can share? Okay, well, I can't, well, <clears throat> first we can, public offering, why a public offering? It's to raise additional capital. Um, how much? We don't know as yet. Uh, <clears throat> usually they might, you know, it, it can be done different ways. It could be a general APO as they have indicated, where they simply put shares to the market and the market can buy up any amount they want. <clears throat> some companies may choose to have a bonus stock issue or you know some rights issue or something of that sort well they've indicated an apu so i think they want to raise unlimited amount of capital uh, they have not yet indicated that detail but <clears throat> looking at their financial statements i can see where uh, for example over the last several years let me just quote some news here uh they have acquired uh, just recently just since February, early February, they have made some acquisition in the United States, California-based Rose Batteries. And we know that they're expanding their footprint in the energy sector and manufacturing sector. Eh? Uh, they have also, last year, June, just July, they made some another acquisition. They have expanded their footprint in the North American um, area right, by establishing another tropical battery entity. We know that recently also they have signed an agreement to take a 50% stake in a dumb rep. That's a Dominican Republic company, Kaya Energy Group. All of that requires money, it requires ex capital, and capital is quite expensive now. Borrowing on the market, for example, you just spoke to Keith on interest rate. It is not only on the lending rate, but trying to acquire that is your issue, a bond of some sort, or go to the bank to borrow. That can be very expensive, and there'll be a lot of um, covenants attached to that that may restrict your ability to grow the company. So they would want to get easiest capital they can which is issue additional shares that's a dilution but the idea dilution of earnings per share because we assume that the profit of the company will not increase immediately let's say they have raised some, some amount of capital by maybe let's say doubling the number of shares outstanding profit may not double that's a long-term development plan right so we might say a dilution but the idea is that the value of the company in the long run medium to long run will grow so this is perhaps the cheaper uh method they have seen uh to raise capital looking into their cash flow statement you, well i can tell it's a strong company that can raise capital you know um their shareholders equity is quite solid right at one point something billion the total number of shares outstanding is about 1.3 billion shares that's probably about uh, uh you know book value of just under a dollar so it's, that's it's quite cheap when you're trading uh, at or below or even somewhere near even slightly above book value that's a quite cheap stock right we can look at their um current assets which means that their liquidity position is not so much challenged but they can do better and if you look at their cash flow statement which shows their uh cash from operating is very positive so it means that the business entity itself is doing quite well in generating revenue right i'm being fairly efficient at generating that revenue if you look at their uh cash flow from investing activity it is negative last quarter ending 2022 september uh december 2022 and now this first quarter ending december 2023 if you look at their cash flow from financing activity that also is negative so they need cash to grow they need capital to grow and i think this is one of the reasons that they have come to the marketplace and they realize that the Jamaican economy is still quite fairly vibrant. You know, unemployment rate low. It means that there's significant potential demand or aggregate demand 
uh, may grow in the economy in the medium to long term. In the long term, we like to see. So I think they're positioned. They want to position themselves for that. And so they're raising, seeking to raise capital. Okay, one to watch for sure. Learn, Grow, Invest says, I don't think the APO is confirmed based on the discussion they had with Alexander Melville a few weeks back. So I guess they're watching the market like everybody is right yeah. now. Int interestingly, we can see, you know, how the, okay, we spoke about the fundamental and why. Huh? Now let's talk about the technical aspect and how the investing public reacts. <clears throat> With the high interest rate environment, people are a little bit sketchy on the stock market. It carries more risk than bonds, than preference shares, you know, putting your money in a bank, etc. safe instruments. It carries more, so people are a bit sketchy. However, even at this time, I believe that the market is a little bit tepid, a little bit tenuous, however, still positive. And what we have seen that over the last three months, we have seen a steady increase in the stock price. In fact, the stock price was fairly flat up to January. Right? And then I, I suspect sometimes that information is out there before it is public. I'm just saying that. Right? But the stock price has moved up, especially since the announcement of this APO. The stock price has moved up a lot. So I think the market has reacted to it positively. They're, they, they support it and they see where the, the direction the company is going. And I think the market is showing that they see value in this company. So they pulled the price up even before the APO which means that there may be a potential good demand for the APO if persons are buying the stock now prior to the issue of additional shares. Any other offers that you're hearing about? You know, I'm not hearing about any other offer. I've heard that there are quite a few companies that don't have any names now. I don't want to mention them at all. Right? But I believe that companies are going to test the market this year. Right? Interestingly, during the COVID period, Several companies tested the market and was fairly successful. Barita with several uh, offer, rights offer, APO offer. Uh, we saw the listing of IPCL. We saw quite a few companies that has done fairly well. The fundamentals of these companies are quite good. The stock price is still fairly cheap, right? So I think more companies are going to test the market. Interestingly, on the monetary side, the governor has indicated that and today we today the 20th today the mpc the monetary policy committee of the boj met right and of course we expected them to keep steady the interest rate <coughs> policy rate now if interest rate is expected to at least be steady to be constant this year then i think slowly we may see companies coming back into the market in terms of ipos apos rights issue you know um some could sweeten the market with a little stock split and then maybe a bonus stock issue as well as we expect to see the investing public come back into the market slowly over the last three weeks we have seen an average movement in nearly all indices Right? Uh, over the last three weeks. Of course, we know that there are a lot of publication of financial reports, which are fairly positive. We know that now the early part of the year is still a dividend declaration period. So those are helping to pull the market up. But when the general market moves up, it also pulls the individual company up and it gives more, uh, I would say, prominence to the individual company's ability and propensity to raise additional capital. Understood. Well, thanks for those insights, Clive. We appreciate it as always. You're most welcome. We're going to take, take our final break and come back with your comments. And I have a lot of them that I want to read this week. This segment of Taking Stock, the Analysts, was brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. All right, welcome back. Let's take our final comments, and there are quite a few of them. So Levar says, good job, JMMB. More money coming with the newly released Moneyline app. 
Dai Prasad says, I guess I missed out on JMMB profits. Next time, Dai, get in now and catch the next wave. Gregory says, regardless of the enormous profits, the stock price still stagnant consistently. There's a fundamental issue that JMMB needs to address. Uh, that's a shareholders issue. That's a, that's a people who trade issue. I think Keith addressed that. Stronglink says, good news. When will the share price move? We also spoke about that. Terribly undervalued. Also want enough dividends now. Waiting for core profits to surge as interest rates fall. Nana Sen says, JMMB is a long-term hold. Once interest rates start to fall, JMMB will go up. Look at NCB and VMBS. And I think that's what Keith was really saying earlier as well. D says, financial stocks have been heavily depressed across the board. Investors have yet to react. That's why I think JMMB price hasn't gone up yet. We have Nanis who says, interest rates are killing us all around. And she was thanking Keith for the explanations. Sean, oh, well, we asked this question earlier. Uh, Luck says, JMMB went up because I bought some at $24. Right now it's at $2701. When did you buy, Sean? What time period? It went up $3, not too bad. Stronglink says, company's office flooded every day with people registering startups. I can tell you that's a fact. Sean, again, wants to know if I can do a video on how to invest in the U.S. stock market. I already have a video on that topic, Sean. You can search this same YouTube channel. Um, just You're already on the channel, already on the platform. Search how to invest in U.S. stocks from Jamaica. I think that's the title of the video. Or you can go over to my website, kalilareynolds.com, and find it there as well. Now, Nesra wanted to know, does it make more sense now? Ah, I was supposed to ask Clive this, and I forgot. Does it make more sense now to just consolidate the companies, like how they have migrated to the main market and no more tax break? Learn, Grow, Invest was making that point about the APO, and they also had a follow-up point. They said, uh, Mr. Melville from Tropical Battery mentioned exploring multiple options for financing and said they will decide in the later part of the year. It's a short interview. I encourage people to check it out for context if interested. So you can head over to Learn, Grow, Invest YouTube channel and search for that video with Tropical Battery, Alexander Melville. And he also mentioned that since that this is because some investors are triggered by APO, which is true. There are quite a few of you who don't like APOs because you say it doesn't perform well. I saw somebody commenting they prefer, here it was Kish, I prefer IPO over APO. And quite a few of you were making comments to that effect. People don't like the term. Uh, I think it kind of, because you haven't had the impact that you expected, you kind of get turned off from it or the, the impact that you've gotten used to over the past three, four, five years, especially with IPOs, you kind of feel underwhelmed when the APO doesn't deliver as strongly as the IPOs have. Uh, Don wanted to know if JMMB is a good stock to buy now. Watch from the beginning, Don. I don't know if you saw the entire interview. And then make up your mind. What do you think? Tevin reminding people to get the likes up. My Johnny wanted to know if JMMB has a stock that's not a preference share. Yes, they do. Their ordinary shares do trade on, on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And by the way, guys, I am having an Investing for Beginners live class on Monday. So I already have Investing for Beginners in Money Mission. It's a pre-recorded uh, course. So for the first time, I'm going to be doing it live. And that's on Monday coming, February 26, right after payday, so that you get your money, right? And then pay for the course. So Investing for Beginners live class is on Monday. I've dropped the link in the chat. It's also in the description. So sign up for Investing for Beginners live chat, uh, live course. I've also dropped the link to a document called Financial Terms Made Simple. I saw somebody was asking, what is equity? Earlier, I think they asked, what is equity raise? And funny enough, I had to check the document and I realized equity is not one of the terms in the document, but I will add it tonight, tonight, tonight. I'm going to add equity to the document. We have 40 commonly used terms in commonly used financial terms. I don't know how I missed that one, equity, because that's a very common one. And uh, yeah, 40 commonly used financial terms, and you can get that. That's a free download. The link is there in the description. Anything else? Alibaba says, you have to work the market now to make good gains, taking several small gains instead of looking for that big one. 
All right, guys, that's it for this week's show, reminding you to like the video. Also, of course, subscribe to the channel and share with a friend. I had a vision today of us hitting the 100,000 mark. We're at 50, like 56,000 subscribers, I think. And I remember when I used to be like, we want to get to 50K subscribers. At the time, we were at like five. And now we're at 56. That's amazing. So I want to get that plaque, though. You know, the, the fancy plaque that the YouTubers get when they hit 100K? Make it happen. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video with a friend. Also subscribe to the newsletter at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter and turn on the post notification so that you can see the first when everything drops. We do have a brand new podcast feature, video podcast with Remax. I hope you guys watched episode one, which was really good last week. Episode two will drop next week, Thursday. And that one is with NHT and it's all about real estate. So it's called The Property Source powered by Remax Elite because we want to help people learn more about money so we can all get this money together. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Kalila Ray. Remember, that's my only account. I have no other backup accounts. Please report the scammers and the impersonators whenever you see them. If you want to connect with Clive, our analyst this week, check the description box below for his contact information. And you can also visit kalilareynolds.com. For financial information, you can use however you like it. You can watch the video, you can listen to the podcast, you can read the articles, and of course, tell a friend about taking stock because investing is the new sexy. Let's make it cool to talk about money. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Let's get this money. <laughs> <laughs>